Holy moly, guys, old Donnie just got rocked by some of the worst news in his entire pathetic existence. And it all broke seconds ago. And it entails his lawyers while he's sitting there, while his big trial is going on, his lawyers abandoning him and sticking and twisting the knife into him, storming out of the courtroom, leaving him slack jawed and without any defense. Because what we've learned is that whether it's lawyers or staffers, Everybody is giving up on Donald Trump, either because they know he can't win, he's a terrible client, he doesn't pay them, or they've given up on Donald Trump to save themselves. It is all going down tonight. So what I have for you is a supercut of people from Trump land going public in shocking ways in the middle of this trial. Most of them lawyers, a couple who are, but most of them lawyers screwing Donald Trump in some of the most hilarious and powerful ways ever. Watch every second. Again, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out and we'll break it down. His instinct was he had won. The um, fake elector plot, as it's been called in the indictment. Tonight, for the first time, an exclusive look at testimony from two attorneys who aided Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. There was a big shouting match in which Rudy called me every name in the book. And um, I was the worst lawyer he'd ever seen in his life. He called me a bitch. ABC News exclusively obtaining portions of confidential interviews given by Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. We're here with a proper witness, Jenna Ellis. Both are now cooperating with prosecutors in Georgia investigating the former president. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have. Because we won the state. Were you ever around when someone, anyone, told uh, Donald Trump that he had lost the election? Oh, yeah. What was um, President Trump's reaction when, I guess, this cadre of advisors would say you lost? It was like, uh, well, they would say that and then they'd walk out and he'd go, see, this is what I deal with all the time. Ellis and Powell were charged alongside the former president and 16 others, accused of trying to overturn the Georgia election results. They have pled guilty to reduce charges, avoiding jail time by agreeing to cooperate, even disavowing Trump in court. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. I look back on this whole experience with deep remorse. Ellis telling prosecutors she was personally informed by Trump advisor Dan Scavino that Trump had no plans to leave the White House, even though Joe Biden was unmistakably the winner of the 2020 election. I uh, emphasized him. I thought that the, um, the, the claims and the ability to challenge uh, the election results was essentially over. And he said um, to me in a kind of excited tone, well, we don't care and we're not going to leave. He said, well, the boss, meaning President Trump, he said the boss uh, is not going to leave under any circumstances. We are just going to stay in power. And I said to him, well, it doesn't quite work that way, you realize. And he said, we don't care. Donald Trump Jr. back on the stand today in the $250 million civil fraud trial in New York against the Trump family business. Last week, when he was called by the state of New York, Don Jr. testified that he had no direct involvement in the company's annual financial statements. Today, Trump Jr. was called as the first witness by his father's defense team, and the son walked the court through a promotional PowerPoint of various Trump properties, calling his father, quote, an artist with real estate, unquote, pointing out details such as the vault at 40 Wall Street, the inside of Mar-a-Lago, and the library at Seven Springs, this was an attempt to show that, if anything, the Trump properties were undervalued in those financial statements. Let's bring in former personal attorney and fixer for Donald Trump, author of the book Revenge and author of Mea Culpa, Michael Cohen. Michael, good to see you. What do you make uh, of Don Jr. referring to his father as an artist when it comes to real estate? 
<laughs> well, I'm not so sure that I would call him an artist. In fact, if you look at the properties that Don Jr. put up on that PowerPoint, Donald is not the creator of any of those. He was just the purchaser. Mar-a-Lago, obviously, he didn't build. That was Marjorie Merriweather Post. He didn't build uh, Seven Springs, uh, nor did he build, uh, you know, for example, Bedminster. These were, that was the former DeLorean estate. So, and, and 40 Wall Street, obviously, as well. He acquired that property. Details, details, Michael. When you testified last month, you, yes, it's you, always details. <laughs> you described on the stand how, how you manipulated Trump's financial statements. You described it as, quote, reverse engineering. Um, do you think that's what Don Jr. is doing kind of with his PowerPoint presentation today? Well, I think what Don is really doing here is he's holding the Trump line, uh, which is what we were all supposed to and required to do. In fact, they should probably change the name from MAGA to MEGA, M-E-G-A, which is make and Goron gag again. Because when I sat on that stand, I watched as Judge and Goron was just, you know, getting visibly nauseous from the lies that were being told uh, by the Trump team, uh, by Trump's counsel, by Donald Don Jr., that he was merely a broker, that Eric Trump was merely a guy who, you know, laid concrete. And so none of which, of course, anybody believes to be accurate or truthful. When it comes to this or any other case, do you think Donald Trump deserves to go to jail? So, look, that, that's a question that's been posed to me. The answer is he needs to be held accountable. And do I believe if it was anyone else that that individual would already be in prison or jail? The answer is emphatically yes. Reasons that they conspired that to, um, to infringe upon my First Amendment constitutional right, making me the very first political prisoner held by my own country because I wouldn't waive my First Amendment constitutional right, not publish my book Disloyal, not do television appearances, not do media, etc. If, if anybody thinks that this is a one-off, if Donald Trump becomes president of the United States again, it's not just going to be me being the very first person that this happened to. There's going to be a multitude of people, possibly yourself included, Jake. Uh, yeah, that has occurred to me. Uh, but they, in the Washington Post article, they talk about John Kelly, uh, Bill Barr, uh, Ty Cobb, and General Mark Milley. I mean, he talked about executing Mark Milley. Could you imagine the man, a general, who has given his life to serving and protecting this country as opposed to Captain Bonespur that avoided his, you know, his responsibility, that he wants to have this man executed because he's angry at him? And then there are still Americans that want to do what? They want to support him both financially and by voting? I don't understand what's happening here. Michael Cohen, good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. Good to see you, Jake. What do you assess the third party movement, uh, who, if there is another candidate, uh, knowing that these presidential elections are made state by state? What's your analysis? I'm worried because, look, I, th I love the idea of a third party. I love the idea of a centrist party. It has to start in the House of Representatives before it goes to the president. Now, here's the deal. I think Donald Trump's base of support is very firm. I don't think you're going to peel anybody off of Donald Trump into something else, right? There are people like me, that not me, but like me, that don't agree with everything Joe Biden does, but would vote for him as opposed to Trump. If you give them an out, you give them a Joe Manchin or somebody, they'll vote for that person. And you may be like, and, and I would say this too, like, good, vote your conscience. But the problem is, the consequences of a Donald Trump victory are so dire that I think you have to hold your nose and vote for somebody maybe you don't like because we can survive four more years of Joe Biden. I'm not sure we can survive four years of Donald Trump. Yesterday, Trump was reacting to a CNN report that says some Trump workers might be called to testify about seeing documents just lying around there at Mar-a-Lago. And here's what he wrote. Of course they did. They may have seen the boxes, et cetera, that were openly and plainly brought from the White House, as is my right under the Presidential Records Act. But, but Steph, you told me on this show in July that you saw Trump show classified documents to people on that dining room patio at Mar-a-Lago. Have you been approached by investigators to talk about his pattern and the way he handled these materials? 
I have definitely spoken with with various people on various investigations, which I don't want to get ahead of any other any further than that. But, you know, I think that what will be important about some of these Mar-a-Lago workers is, you know, yes, they they will have probably seen the boxes. But I think what they'll be able to testify to is that absolutely nothing gets done at Mar-a-Lago or Bedminster or any of his properties without his say so, period. It could be the smallest thing. It could be the maids putting, you know, soap in a certain place. He knew everything. He directed everything. I spent, you know, five years every holiday with the first family at Mar-a-Lago and in, in Bedminster as well. And so I actually got to know all of those workers too. And everyone does exactly what he says. Nobody makes a move without him. And that goes down to the to the exactly the maids and Donald Trump and the autocratic movement that is emerging around him. And if you listen to what he says on the record every day and what his people are telling you they will do, they have a gun to the head of American democracy and this and this republic. If we elect Donald Trump again, we will not have the country we believe that exists today. We will not have an America with individual liberties, rights, and freedoms. We will have an autocratic system run by Donald Trump and a clack of these weirdo alt-right guys that surround him, like Steve Bannon and Stephen Miller and the rest. And everyone, as you correctly said, everyone else in this race, at the end of the day, that pulls a single vote away from Joe Biden, they're not just voting for Trump. They're voting to end this country as we know it. You know, look, Joe Manchin has, has done a lot of image shaping for himself over the years, and he's leveraged the fact that he was a Democrat in a very red state uh, to become sort of a tie-breaking vote over and over again. He's held the White House hostage repeatedly. Um, but look, there's nothing about Joe Manchin's philosophy or character uh, in the record that shows it's about anything more than Joe Manchin. He is a guy who has consistently been considered one of the most venal uh, and, and, frankly, you know, on the verge or of or or over the line of being one of these transactional Republican figures that, on paper, everyone should hate. The 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 idea that this is a guy who lives on a on a on a extraordinarily expensive yacht in Washington Harbor, holds court with lobbyists 24 hours a day, is not exactly the appealing idea that most Americans who think they're in the sensible center embrace. But I will say this: you know, he is a guy who has shown over and over again that he puts himself well before any other interest in the country. Again, he's held Joe Biden hostage repeatedly um, on legislative matters. And and folks in Washington who know Joe Manchin, um, he, he'd be very low on the trust tier it, for most people who, who know his record, his personality, and his character. I mean, there you have it. I don't got much more to say. Whether it's Sydney, whether it's Jenna, whether it's Michael Cohen, all of these people are tearing into Trump. Again, in the middle of trial, Right in the middle of his trial, this is breaking. You know, when he needs lawyers the most, his current lawyers are iffy, but all these former lawyers are coming out of the woodwork to trash him, to take him down. Staffers too, making deals. And if they don't have to make deals because they're not criminal, certainly dishing the dirt on Trump to help take him down. He is cooked.